Episode 167. I believe achieving success in the outdoor biz is dependent upon embracing the outdoor lifestyle and learning from outdoor leaders that came before you. If you agree, then listen up for tips, advice, and hacks about growing or starting your career in the outdoor biz. My name is Rick Says. Welcome to the Outdoor Biz Podcast. If you're into fly fishing or want to start, you'll love episode 167 with Chad Alderson and Nick Hanna, the guys over at barbless.co. We talk about the great content they're creating through their podcast and web resources. But first, if you're thinking about starting your own podcast for your brand or passion project, I've created a free cheat sheet outlining 10 fundamental steps to create and launch your podcast. It has everything you need to know about planning, creating, and launching. Head over to ricksays.com and download this free resource today. Chad Alderson and Nick Hanna, the guys over at Barbla CEO, have a great podcast to add to your list and are developing fantastic resources for new and veteran fly anglers alike. The rig section of their website is an encyclopedia. We also talk about their new app coming soon, which will be chock full of fly angling goodness. Enjoy. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Yeah, great to catch up with fellow podcasters. I always like talking to fellow podcasters. It's a blast. Yeah, we need to do more of it. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to uh, one of the guys I follow in the podcast world. He's done some um, advising for me, and he says, you need to get on like 10 more podcasts, dude. So that's my I'm, goal. I'm new to the podcast game aside from hosting this and, or, or uh, being on the show, you know. And, yeah, yeah. And I just, I, when I start listening to all these other podcasts, it's amazing what, what the content is out there. It's incredible, know? isn't it? Yeah. You can learn anything. Yep. Between, between a YouTube and, and a podcast platform, you can pretty much learn anything. Exactly. School is obsolete. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's what, Unless that's you're what, doing heart surgery. You're right. Medical school, maybe if you want to be an yeah. accountant or something like that. But yeah, no, you're right. It's, uh, it's the sky's wide open. So how did you guys get into the outdoors? What was your first exposure to the outdoor life or maybe fly fishing specifically? Nick, you want to go first? You want, you want me to answer that? <laughs> you go first. I go. feel like I've been living and breathing that the outdoors since I was I could I could walk. My, right da- my dad was just super into it, and um, you know, I, from a little tyke, I I've got some I have pretty good memory, and I can remember just being out on little creeks and um, and for one instant, you know, fishing uh, trout on the stream and, and hooking into some fish, and he's always been kind of letting me, you know, let me on my own and. Um, yeah, I for since I was a little kid, man, we've been right fishing, hiking, hunting, camping, you know, going to Eagle Lake and and camping out and catching so Eagle Lake rainbows and kind of as soon as you could walk, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right the on. outdoors have definitely been a, a big part of of my life, and you always will be. I just had a son; he's six oh, months old. And very cool. So I hope to. I got a backpack. I'm just waiting for his head to stop bobbling when I carry him. <laughs> he's gonna. I'm gonna throw him right in that thing. Right. Awesome. Good for you. That's great. Yeah. Well, cool. I guess for me, like my exposure to the outdoors is I kind of like lived in the middle of a rice field for a long time. Mm-hmm. And so kind of by default, I'd walk out my back door and there was nothing but rice paddies. Mm-hmm. And then so the outdoors were kind of like used as a form of punishment for me. And I got in <laughs> trouble a lot as a kid. So I had to do a lot of manual labor. So I think I I had to, you know, <laughs> mentally overcome the, uh, the baggage that I had associated with the outdoors. So right. I, you know, I went to school and and then got went down in the city basically i went lived in the bay area for 10 years lived in sacramento for five lived in los angeles for 10 years wow city and guy. then yeah and then moved back up to chico because that's where i'm from originally in chico california mm-hmm. and kind of you know i was playing video games I was, i'm quite good at battlefield <laughs> by the way um don't test you know, that, folks. Don't test I, I that. I podcast and I'm great at Battlefield. It's two things that girls love. <laughs> <laughs> they really attracted that. That's on your Facebook profile. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but anyway, um, I kind of got back up here and I was like, "Well, what the heck am I going to do?" Because I didn't really have any hobbies or anything. So I started. I started getting to fly fishing because my dad took me um, mm-hmm. when I was a little kid. On you know, we'd camp once in a while, mm-hmm. and that was my exposure to it at first. But I didn't have a ton. It definitely wasn't part of my life. Mm-hmm. And and up until shoot three years ago three and a half years ago i didn't really hadn't touched a fly rod wow 20 20 plus years Mm -hmm. and nick and i just happened to meet at a party and um had some common interests and we kind of the friendship sprouted from there we went started going fishing together and then one thing led to another and you know now we're in in a business Right, that's very cool. Yeah, and you guys don't let him fool you. Once Chad gets into something, he's he's all in. He's all first. in, huh? Well, that's yeah, good. That's good. true. That's awesome. That helps. That's true. And you guys have been podcasting for how long now? 
How long has it been, man? Like, a little over two years. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're in our third season. Right on. Cool. Yeah. We've and, got, um, I think we just published our 86th episode today. Very sweet. Congratulations. That's good. Yeah. And you do and once a week, all, twice a week. What's your, what's your, we'll get into one, this more a little bit, but yeah, yeah, like once a week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Consistently cool. once a week. And do you guys remember your first fish on the fly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely do. Well, yeah, I remember a buddy of mine taking me up to the high mountain, uh, spring Creek and, um, we were catching just little tiny like brookies and, and rainbows. And, uh, but before I could even get the fly out, you know, he's running me through all this stuff. And, and then he's like, okay, see you later. And he just takes off hiking down the Creek. I'm like, uh, what, I'm like, what am I supposed to do now? Right. So I'm, I'm cast and trying to get this fly out and I make a, like, I'm like, Oh, this is working. Yeah. I'm getting it out there. And I start getting a pretty good cast going. And then all of a sudden I get stuck behind me. I'm like, what the, oh, no. and I turn around and I got the guy's dog oh. by the, <laughs> by the side <laughs> in his side. Um, and he, the dog didn't even yelp or anything. It's just sitting there looking at me. <laughs> He's probably hooked a million oh. times. Oh, here we go again. Like, oh, were, you, like, were you barbless at that I'm point? Like, oh my gosh. I just, no, probably not. Probably not barbless. <laughs> so your first fish on the fly was a dog. <laughs> technically yeah nice. what technically. kind of dog was it uh it's kind of kind of mutt you know like a, like a it's like a squaw fish basically. yeah exactly <laughs> oh, yeah man. i was i was stealing my dad's fly rod out of his uh out of the garage you know for a long time that's i was always brought i was brought up conventional fishing but uh, okay mm-hmm. you know i was always trying to grab that thing and go out and and find some new water not go to pe class and, right right do something fun and different, you know? Yeah. Very cool. Good for you. Well, I have a legendary shit memory, so I don't remember my first <laughs> fly. I don't even know what I ate this morning, to be honest. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know um, what? If you don't need to know, why remember it? If you can look it up, why exactly. remember it? Exactly. Yeah. Um, memorable fish, that would be probably one on my cloud when I was, I was started mm-hmm. throwing streamers last year. Mm-hmm. And this, uh, like, one about as big as my forearm came up out of the depths out of nowhere it was a brownie and nice. and i you know it didn't it didn't commit but it looked at it and that was enough you know so <laughs> there's that's the thing about fly fishing like there's these little moments in yeah. time that just get kind of frozen and then just imprinted on your skull mm-hmm. well in your brain i guess technically but um well, some of us imprinted t- on our skull it depends you know, it's true how big we your talk brain about is. this a lot it's funny because um you know you remember the fish you lose Right. You don't, right. you don't remember the, like the 10th fish you landed that right. day, you right. know, but yeah. you remember the one that got away. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's kind of funny that way. It's interesting. That's yeah, with yeah. relationships too. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> we're doing, but we're talking about outdoors, right? Yeah. yeah this is okay. an outdoor podcast. I'm not doing focus, uh, so. yeah, I don't do relationship. You do not want relationship advice from me. That goes for the <laughs> listeners too. Don't call me about that. <laughs> oh, so you're not going to start a podcast around the subject? <laughs> not at all. I don't think I'm going to be a guest on one. <laughs> Um, it's weird. It's weird answering questions um, from you, Rick. It's you know because we're used to being on the other side, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. We're right, used yeah to be on the yeah. other side of the mic. Yeah, I'll bet. It's kind of nervous. Let- yeah, you know we can <coughs> bounce back and forth. So I think it's going good. What about how about your most recent fish? Have you guys been out recently? Yeah, I took um, I took my kid out for the first time. He, he was had his first experience in a boat, and um, we just went out. the ri- The rivers have been swollen with all the water yeah. that you've, you, as you know, in we still California's have snow been, here. I mean, it's a lot know, of yeah, crazy. California's been getting so. Yeah. Um, we finally got a chance, and, and all our crazy stuff going on in life, to um, get out there, and uh, we went shad fishing. Oh, and, cool! Um, it was slow because the river was muddy because the river had just come up. Yeah. But we, we ended up with a couple enough to, you know, landed one and got it in his, in his face. He had this big frown going, you know, not knowing what the heck was happening. But, yeah. um, is that the fish or the client? Yeah. The guy. <laughs> yeah. The guy. <laughs> that was my last, last time out. All right. Cool. Um, let's see. You went to Alaska. Oh, thank you. Oh, see, wow. I need, you forgot Nick about Alaska? Me. How'd you forget about Alaska? R- remind, or Nick, Rick. <laughs> uh, now I'm super Now confused. you're going to be messed up. <laughs> Basically, uh, Nick always reminds me of like little life events that I forget. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So I went you to Alaska. Aren't... All right, never mind. Yeah, go ahead. Never mind. No, I'm not going to ask that. <laughs> you went to Alaska. <laughs> okay. I was going to say you guys yeah, aren't married. Yeah, went to Alaska <laughs> to uh, to Prince of Wales, Alaska, which is like a small. Um, well, it's not a super small island, but it's a small island like northwest of Ketchikan. So mm-hmm. it's like a 20 minute puddle jumper. Okay. Yeah. And it's a rainforest, and it hadn't rained three weeks before I got there. Had not. So no, it wow. had not. So when I got there, um, you know, there's I don't I forget how many rivers there are 
that are in there, but they're fairly short. Like I think the longest one's like seven miles long. Hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The Thorn, I believe they call it. Um, it's a cool river name. Yeah, it's yeah. a really cool river name. It, but there was no water, so there were uh, everything was basically at a standstill almost. Oh. I mean, there was there was current, but it wasn't enough to like, you know, give a fish make a fish have a bad decision he had plenty <laughs> of time to look at it mm-hmm. uh but we you know we cut we touched some fish you got some steelhead one one like 26 the other one was almost oh wow 30. good for you yeah but they were they were all um they were all downers which means they've they're pretty much spawned spawned mm-hmm. out already mm-hmm. and they've been in the system for a while so i'm you know i'm not a huge fan of pounding on downers all day so right. um i spent a lot of time with the guy that that i had um we just kind of like saw the countryside to be honest just drove mm-hmm. around you know as soon as I f- we figured out what the game was going to be mm-hmm. i kind of lost interest in in you know hammering downers for seven days straight and mm-hmm. i just wanted yeah. to kind of explore so we we uh we saw a lot of a lot of the countryside saw a ton of deer there's so many deer up there it's right, insane right but um you know saw a lot of different watersheds in there and it was, was that your first time you know, to alaska no, I've been a couple other times. I love it up there. It's uh-huh. it's, it's amazing. amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's like if you've seen Avatar, I think that a lot of um, some of the writers, Cameron must have been to Alaska at least <laughs> once because there's a lot of, it smells like Alaska. Interesting. The Avatar yeah, I haven't seen that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Vi- visually smells. Smells like it? <laughs> yeah, visually. <laughs> Rick, when was the last time you went fishing? What was in, what was the, Boy, uh, I probably have not been fishing since last year. You know, we have, it's seasonal around here. Right. And, uh, I don't, I don't, there's a couple of places you go in the wintertime, but it was, you know, we had the winter from, winter from God or winter from hell. I'm not sure how you want to put it, but we got, we had the hellacious winter here. So I've been pretty, pretty hard at it working, but I'm going to go, yeah. uh, it's starting to loosen up. You know, the water's high in a few places, but there's some places to go. I think I'm going to hit the upper Owens or maybe hot Creek over the weekend and oh, see cool. what's going on there. Yeah. Yeah. We got unlimited places to fish. You just got to watch the water levels right now, but yeah. That's true about California. There, it's it's a couple lifetimes of you yeah know, learning the systems and trying to find, cover it all. You know, yeah, I don't think exactly. you can do even do it in a couple lifetimes. But it's unique because it, even though it is seasonal, there's 365 days of fishing to do. Exactly, you know? somewhere you can't yeah. Yeah. you can't say that about um, hardly anywhere. Anywhere, yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, and then that's could. not even you know you, you include the ocean, and it's just you know unbelievably un- it's surf right. fishing and. Yep. You guys know yep. Seth Blackamore? He's he's from around here. He's he's a big fisher, fly fisherman, big, big follower on Instagram. He spends. I, I think I follow him actually. On yeah, Insta. he's he's yeah. like relentless. That guy. He's amazing. He fishes all the time. And there's this dude up here. He's not a fly fisherman, but he's a kid. He's probably like 18. We call him, we call him the kid. That kid. <laughs> uh, power trip. Is that his? Is that his handle? Power trip. Ryan. Nice. Ryan trip. Ryan trip. Yeah. His, his his handle's power trip. Yeah. yeah. Dude's a G man. <laughs> like you look at his Instagram and you'll just shit yourself. Because it's just basically thirty plus inch cromers yeah. off the coast, and yeah. he knows where That's to go. That's the way get Seth them. is. Wherever he goes, it's big but, fish. Even around here, you look at his trout. It's like, dude, where are you getting those fish? It's amazing. Yeah, he puts a he puts up some serious hours out on the water. Though. Right. He's, That's what it takes. Yeah. You That's know, he takes. may may take his birthday off. Fish fear him. <laughs> Women yeah. don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see a t-shirt. That is the trade off if you want to get good there. at fly fishing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or fishing in general. So, how did you guys get inspired to start Barbless Co? You just stumbled on each other at a party and decided let's do a podcast. Chad's, or? Chad's little brainchild, man. He yeah. uh, he was all about it, he, and I was like, "Podcast? What? Yeah. You know?" And yeah. Yeah. He's, he's equipped to better answer this. And I've heard like three answers and <coughs> in oh. the end of it, I'm, it evolves. It depends on who I'm talking to. I, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that he started a podcast so he can learn all the secret fishing spots in, in our area. But <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, we've been, we've been really good yeah, about keeping yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, you fishermen keep... are by nature very cagey. And so yeah. we, uh, we've, we've yeah. been very careful about that. And I think that's been helpful. That's good you know, for yeah, us. Yeah, but, people know uh, they can trust you. Yeah. Why did we, why, why did you start Barbless, Chen? Well, I would, argue that i didn't start barbless i would say that we started barbless first of all <laughs> but we cool. met um when we met at the party um we kind of like started talking and and i'm a you know i'm a software geek by nature my okay. my trade craft is um product management and, and interaction design so it's basically a fancy word for like i always like to use home building analogies but basically if um if you get a home built you need a home, an architect and then if you need somebody to build the home you need a general contractor so i mm-hmm. kind of do that for software oh okay so i what have kind an of idea. software sorry what kind of software um it depends it's all work for hire so we all kinds. we okay. build we build uh contact management platforms uh-huh. we build a lot of different things okay 
Um, it's all custom software apps, though. It's not like gotcha. we can do websites, but I typically don't like to do websites because they're not that challenging. I like right. original software problems to solve. And so when I got into the fly fishing thing, I see the world through the lens of software and software as a solution to some problems mm-hmm. that I see. So I applied that to the fishing industry in general and fly fishing because that's what I was into at that point in time and still am. And um, saw some opportunities and started talking talk about them. Yeah. He was on board and like he knows shit loads more than I do about the space. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of like our expert user on the system. And he, um, you know, he's also, roll, he rolls up as, as product manager as well mm-hmm. um, to kind of, you know, make sure I stay in the rails with, in terms of my thinking when, right. we, when mm-hmm. we talk about it strategically, where the, where it's where it's heading and all that. So mm-hmm. back then, like two and a half, three years ago, you know, the podcast was, I threw him the idea because I wanted to kind of like, I knew that there was going to be a long roadmap to build this out, and and the 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 platform itself is uh, is fairly complex in terms of what we're trying to accomplish with it. Yep. But I wanted to kind of like build build a marketing base from day one, mm-hmm. and a podcast was kind of the way to make that happen for the brand. That's a great idea, yeah. Because yeah, I mean, it's really about establishing domain authority in the space that you're trying to to you know penetrate mm-hmm. and trust in the brand you know you do that by right you don't you don't get trust overnight trust is earned and right. we did the podcast to kind of like earn people's trust and also establish credibility and also to educate um our listeners and also ourselves i mean i've learned uh just ton of <laughs> stuff from the, the people that we've had on the show yeah, you know we've yeah. had the type of guests that we have on are there's fisheries biologists, there's fisheries management yeah, people. Yeah, I was looking there's through your list. You've got people quite a in range. water law. There's yeah. other entrepreneurs, there's yeah. guides. There, it's a the whole gambit. Of, you know, and I think that's what separates us from a lot of the different fishing podcasts in general mm-hmm. is that we don't just talk about fly fishing like we've had or fishing. We've you know we've had like sushi chefs on. <laughs> and we've had like what what other crazy guests that we had on that you wouldn't traditionally clean, clean canteen clean uh-huh. canteen yeah, we yeah, just yeah. we just talked to the uh you know one of the the co-owners of clean canteen and that cool. was really yeah. about hey how did you build this brand mm-hmm. you know what did you guys do how did you scale it and we got into the production and operations manage of management of the, the business which mm-hmm. i don't think you're going to find on a lot of fishing podcasts yeah so, right exactly so, right and you i love yeah. the uh, the biology part of it too i mean there's a lot yeah it's, it's, we have to educate fishermen. We have to educate everybody in the outdoors about that. Yeah, but, and, yeah. and the reason we did that is because there's there's a lot of um, we, I like to call them, and Nick likes to call them armchair biologists that mm-hmm, kind of mm-hmm. question all the policy decisions. Now, I'm not right. saying every policy decision that's out there live is is a good thing, but right. we wanted to build some empathy with the fishing community in terms of what these humans that actually are, are actual humans making these decisions, right. and it's coming from a good place right. to give them an idea of like what their operational parameters are Mm -hmm. or constraints, if you will. So that's why we have those type of folks on. So what are some of the other things you you're planning to do on the platform? I tell you, but we'd have to kill you. Yeah. yeah, We we can't talk about that. Right. (laughs) We've learned, we've learned a ton though, man. I I just got done telling somebody that, you know, I've been doing this my whole life and I've learned, you know, almost more in two years than I have my entire life of surrounding myself with professionals, you Mm -hmm. know, and it's it's the same here. Yeah. That's pretty cool to be able to to say that and mm-hmm. do that. And, yep. and by far, I mean, to sum up what we've learned um, uh, in all these episodes <laughs> and, and knowledge is that to now more than ever is that we have farmers, anglers, biologists, um, landowners, politicians, all these people are starting to work together. There's mm-hmm. still massive hurdles for us to take sure. on, but yep. um, we, we, we're working together to, to make a a difference and make things better for not only people first. Right. 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 But the fish. Yeah. The and land and the fish. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's pretty cool. We've, we've definitely jacked up our, our state, you know, back going back into the 1800s by creating canals and doing all these things and that we can't reverse, but right. yeah. we can learn from it and mm-hmm. we can do better things. And, and it's happening now more than ever. It's, it's going to again, take, it's a long road, but yeah, and it's one of those things that's cool. always, you know, you're going to run into something, always something pops up. There's some guys over here that are trying to do some hydroelectric 
power things and they want to start with storing water in the wilderness and it's like come on hold on we've already gone through this battle now here's how this works you know right yeah. you gotta it's always there's always gonna be something but it's great that you guys are involving everybody that's that's the starting point right everybody's gotta have a yeah, voice I mean, so we're you know we're trying to host a a, a a platform that people can come in on and you know have have respectable debates and right, and right you know basically let the listener decide give give them an, an idea of what they're you know how to form their opinion mm-hmm. and you've been based to, on actual facts you've been to a couple of regional shows have you been to the the uh the trade the national trade show also um so we did we did the one in um where was that one pleasanton mm-hmm. we did the pleasanton, pleasanton yeah. fly fishing mm-hmm. show yeah. and we did we were there two or three days mm-hmm. we interviewed how many people like a lot yeah, I was yeah, listening was, to one of those episodes. It was six, Man, six, okay. six, a day, six to yeah. eight a day or something. And, and they weren't short interviews. Yeah. It was yeah. like 20 to 45 minute interviews, mm-hmm. you know, and, mm-hmm. and it, I, I said it was like speed dating. <laughs> I've never speed dated, but it, it was exhausting. I'll bet. I'll bet. <laughs> right. Yeah. And we were, we were supposed to do a third day and we just like, we were so tired. It was <laughs> like, we, and Nick had to be home and I was kind of th- happy because we were driving home and we could barely talk and I'm like, Holy shit. I'm so tired. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Where's you? Like, yeah. I am too. Yeah. I miss my kid. Talk. I didn't there miss my lady, but yeah. I miss my kid. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that part out. <laughs> what about the, uh, the dealer that, uh, I think it was an IFT D I forget what they call it now. They have the trade show, the one that's coming yeah, up in October. Show, yeah. Have yeah. You yeah that got, one before or no, no, okay. we, we haven't. And we got invited to, um, basically, do a do a discussion there host a discussion and cool. then also podcast live off their their uh their their convention floor somewhere yep. awesome Very still cool. working out the details but um it's going to be like a podcasting 101 kind of a thing mm-hmm. so if you're um you know if you're listening you're you have an outdoor brand which i'm assume you do if you're listening to this podcast um we are going to be basically giving people the a toolkit that they can use to start a podcast from scratch um and manage the entire thing soup to nuts also the content strategy and the efficacy for doing so and cool. you know how to how to get guests and how to mm-hmm. you know interview those guests and book them and you know basically everything you need mm-hmm. you need to do yeah in order to run a, a tight ship yeah cool yeah i just launched a cheat sheet on that which i am um, one of the intros will have sent everybody to the website to download the cheat sheet but basically yeah. the same kind of thing because i think you guys probably agree with this. Some of these brands and, and, and retailers and businesses in both spaces, outdoor and fly fishing, podcasts are such a unique way to engage with your customer that I think it's a big miss if you're not doing it. So, Well, 100%. I mean, a lot of when, you, uh, when you're typically doing a media interview, you're, you're kind of at their, their mercy in terms right. of how they want to spin it editorially, right? right. You're just mm-hmm. – you're getting – um, you know, snippets of quotes, or you're getting audio sound bites. Yeah. This particular medium, the great thing about it is there's no really established rules on how long it is. Right. Therefore, you don't have any time constraints, which you know obviates the need for edit editing. Right. 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 Well, and people so, don't always have time to read your 1600 word blog post, but they can listen to your podcast. And it's hard to watch. It's hard to watch it. Yeah. And always watch a YouTube video right, yeah, when yeah. you're yeah. driving. Yeah. Exactly. And you haven't yeah. seen me in person, but nobody wants to see me on video. So, <laughs> yeah. um, I got yeah, so it, it's just a face. So it's just a great. It's a great medium. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's an amazing medium, and you know, it's the first. It, you know, ironically, it's the first medium that started in communications in the country, right? For other than the Morse code, it was like. Radio was it, right? So everybody got their info, and it worked. I think it works so well, and people are drawn to it because you know we've been evolutionarily we've been around campfires telling stories, exactly. and handing down knowledge yeah. for you know eons. Yeah, I was and, reading something the other day. I think it was produced by um, Spotify that was talking about the intimacy of audio and podcasts yeah. are one of the more intimate forms of audio, just because you can engage. You feel like you engage with. Whoever's telling the story, whatever they're telling the story about. If you're yep. interested, if the reason you got there in the first place is because you wanted to listen to the story, so I think it's yeah. I mean, storytelling's right. part of our, you know, yeah. our uh, our shared culture and our we shared humanity. Do. Yeah, that's right. It makes me think about my lady who, when she was getting ready for work, all she was doing is listening to you know pregnancy podcasts, you know, and learning yeah. about mm-hmm. basically what was about to happen, yeah. you know, giving right. birth to a child. Uh, and she, I've never seen her so engaged into something, mm-hmm. but yeah. it was a big, big deal for her. Yeah, and and the other, you know, the other cool thing about it, if you're a brand listening and you're and you're thinking about doing this, is you've got 
the reason I, another reason I think it's podcast as a medium is doing so well is because you've got a lot of people that are being able to reclaim time that they would normally just consider yep. sunk time. And yep. my example would be a commute, yep. you know, yep. you got an hour commute, you can listen to, you know, 10 songs, 15 songs, and it's a nice, you know, it's a nice passive way to enjoy it, but you don't really get much value out yeah, of it. Yeah, your brain just goes on autopilot where you're yeah, listening. You but know, knows if, what you're rummaging through in your brain. Yeah, but yeah. if that same commute you're doing every day, one hour in each direction, I don't know what the math is on that. Let's call it 10 hours, right? Um, <laughs> that's 10 hours of, of time that you can learn. Yeah. And if you are in their loop in terms of what they consider part of their curriculum for that that month or that week or whatever it is, right. then – it's a good spot to be. You've got and, a captive audience and they're, you know, they're the most susceptible time for them to be given, you know, new ideas in terms yeah. of product or whatever it is you're trying to, to right. you know, sell. And it's it's another way too. People are, you know, you're, everybody's into something and there's so many podcasts yeah. out there now that there's yeah, a podcast yeah. on everything. So if you're into something, you know, you're going to tune into that podcast to learn more and then you start to engage with that community and it's, yeah, yeah it's just, it's huge. Yeah. And that's another reason advertising on the, on this platform, this yeah, medium right. does so well too. Yeah, that's right. So Highly segmented. What, what's been your most fun episode? Was it the Pleasanton one sound like a beat up, but was it, it had to be part of it was fun. It, it was totally fun. Yeah. Um, what was your most favorite or fun? I, I, I've had a couple. I, I really liked uh, interviewing Deck Hogan. He was a fun oh, yeah. one. Mm-hmm. And then um, Mike Mercer was probably my favorite. Mm-hmm. He's just, mm-hmm. but he's been kind of a, um, I've idolized over him and his, his passion. Oh, he's an icon. For, yeah, he's for an years. icon. Yeah, right. and, and uh, you know, he's been dying. He's traveled, and he's got his fly tying, and yeah. he, he's just, he's such a, and such a nice guy. And he Great originated guy. from from our hometown, and, and we were lucky that he had his parents that still live here, so we were, I was like, hey, Mike, you got to come into the studio. Oh, man, cool. Right do a but definitely want to have him back. I think a lot of people enjoyed it, too, mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. You know, he's just, yeah. he talked about triggers, and that's mm-hmm. one of the things I he's still I think about every time I sit down at the vice. What's a trigger, Nick? So, uh, <laughs> you see how I got close. That's a little technique we use in the, in the profession. A oh, trigger is, a is something you... that the trout <laughs> sees as it's coming down the, the river and it, it triggers a, a strike or oh, a take okay. for, for it to eat. So mm-hmm. he applies that to his fly tying and, and just things like that, you know, yeah. that we pick up doing these podcasts um, yeah, exactly. but yeah that was there's a lot of memorable ones we had a lot I'll of great bet. guests you guys um, yeah look at your show, list so. yeah yeah how about the most challenging what was the most challenging hmm probably this one no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> these um, other podcasters man they're tough well okay so cha- define challenging like there's yeah. there's well, some it could have that been really, technically ta- really have technically challenging or somewhere you get a guest yeah, or you yeah. just got to pull yeah, the info um, out of them i think for me personally, it's the ones where we have someone in that's coming from the state or federal agencies mm-hmm. that we have to prep for. And, and we do this because it's kind of a, it's a disarming tactic. And this gets back down to guests and how to manage guests. Mm-hmm. And this will, we, this is something we would cover on the one-on-one stuff um, in Denver. But um, basically we, we need to provide, we provide the, the questions up front. Yep, I do too. To these federal and state folks, because they're coming in, they're representing, you know, they're coming in a highly professional manner. Mm-hmm. These are mm-hmm. these people, doctors, professors, yeah, right, they're, right, these right. Are published, very intelligent PhD folks. Mm-hmm. They right. don't want to look like idiots when they come on the show. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, those type of guests are challenging in terms of the the prep time it takes to get mm-hmm. ready for them. Right, right. Yeah, do a lot of research. Yeah. Yeah, they don't want to look like idiots. I don't want to look like idiots. <laughs> I don't need answers. right. Yeah, yeah I don't we want to ask stupid questions. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. We, we need to keep the flow going. You yeah, know, with yeah. these with these guests, and that this isn't our you know our profession, so we kind of have to you know appear on on audio smarter than we actually are. Yeah. So <laughs> That's a good point. yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of of doing it from the hip. You know, I, mm-hmm. I I like that style, and I like the way some of them come out. But Chad's so good at creating these uh, you know putting these questions together and um, organizing it to a place where we have an intro body and outro and, and, yeah and and we can keep it smooth too between the two of us podcasting i think that helps a lot dude that's our secret is, sauce is that yeah. we we're able to keep that 
that momentum going and, and yeah. yeah, I think you can you somewhere. can that's I like to send the guests the questions ahead of time too, but that doesn't preclude me from having a couple of questions written down or depending on how the, yeah. the conversation goes, you can oh, always Yeah, right. Even though down. we have a script, we we don't stick to the script per se. It's right, more of guideposts right. for the exactly. interview. Yeah. And it's really again, it's a dis it's mostly a disarming tactic. And, you know, we we we're smart enough now, we've done enough of these interviews to know, you know, what potentially what a you know a hot a hot button you right, know, kind right. of non-starter thread conversation thread would get in right, be, so right, we right. we avoid those yeah cool um have you guys had any mentors that have helped you along the way either po- youtube podcasting or fishing <laughs> youtube <laughs> like we knew dick about audio engineering when oh, we started right. this same thing. Yeah, no, i mean exactly. literally nothing yeah yeah we got on youtube in our original did you take a course like, of some sort or you just did you learned it all on youtube we we learned it on youtube or self-taught good for you cool Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, we kind of, you know, we've, we've kind of stumbled along the way, but we, one thing from day one, what we wanted to do was make sure the audio quality was the best it could possibly be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's so important. It's huge. Yeah. I had a podcast. You got to get the uh, technical stuff nailed. And then when you do, then the hard stuff starts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you have to, you have to have good audio. Well, it's all, everything starts with good content. So once you have good content, yeah. then once you, you know, push it out there, someone's going to pick it up and, and that's how it grows. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Tell us about some nonprofits that you guys work with. I saw a couple on your website. I thought, right? Yeah, yeah. I I wish I did more of that. You mean what do you mean by nonprofits? Like, uh, like donating our time stuff. to outside yeah, giving organizations back. Yeah, giving back, or like, like Cast? Uh, is it Cast for Hope or Cast Hope? Yeah, Cast, Cast Hope, Hope is a great guys. organization yeah. that uh, we definitely bring up a lot, and we've interviewed a lot of those guys, and they do a fantastic job. We're not directly, you know, work with them directly, but mm-hmm. um, we pr- we promote it big time because they're getting this industry is going to die if we, if we don't get kids yep. into the sport they're picking up tablets they're picking up iphones yeah you know it's really important to get kids back outside and we we need little conservationists too because exactly they grow up right. into big conservationists yep. that's exactly right yeah yeah yep. yeah i had a good uh, buddy of mine who's into the fly fishing space and he has a, a group that he works with in the bay area and they use the oakland casting ponds and the san francisco casting ponds and i think a couple of weekends ago he said he had like 30 uh, sixth graders out there, or fifth graders. Uh, that's or fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah, really, awesome. Great. Yeah, yeah. It, actually, it's funny you bring that up. Today, I was on the radio twice. I was in our local action news during the noon, and it's all it was all to promote uh, hooked on fishing, not on drugs, which is a oh, nonprofit cool. that um, some guy started here thirty years ago. It's thirty two years going strong. Wow. And it's the largest kids fish out in the nation. Uh-huh, right One on. of the largest kids fish out in the nation. We plant 8,000 pounds of catfish with the help of all these business owners throughout town. They donate, you know, up to $25,000 every year for us to be able to buy these catfish. And, um, That's we awesome. have a cleaning station provided that day and, you know, the, a lot of single moms and, um, grandparents and, and parents and families come out and, mm-hmm. and get a chance. It's almost a guaranteed catch, you know, it's what uh-huh, I call yeah. it catching, not fishing. Mm-hmm. And we even have like a huck, huck fin pond that's set up for the one to five year olds. They can oh, just walk cool. up and grab a rod and there's fish on the end of the line. Oh, it's wow. kind that's of, funny. it's, it's a weird thing going from fly fishing to this, to that, you know, but it's still, it's one of those things that you got to get them fishing. You mul- know, they're going to multiple generations. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. there's multiple generations that keep coming back. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Excited about it. And know, once so. they get fishing, you never know where they're going to go. Like I started that's out as right. a bait fisherman before I got into fly fishing. So same yeah. here. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the um, big, biggest fish gets to take home a pound of weed, so it works out pretty good. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Most of what we said in the last two minutes has been true. <laughs> we'll put a disclaimer on the intro. <laughs> okay. um, what other outdoor activities do you guys participate in? Do you hike? Do you backpack? Um, I don't. Sit in, long, sit in a lawn chair and drink beer? I wish I had more time to do that stuff. You know, yeah. I love golf. I, I just okay, don't, have, yeah, enough yeah, yeah. Same, I just don't yeah. have enough time for it. Um, well, now that you have a son, you'll, you'll be out there all the time doing that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hunt. I love to hunt. Okay. Um, yeah. I, would, I'm, I love duck hunting, um, big game, mm-hmm. um, up one game, whatever, yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever. It is. I go a lot. I go, fl- I go fishing a lot. Um, I haven't been lately just because the weather has been so screwed, yeah, right. but you know, I, I think I put like a hundred days on the water last year and I'm wow. not a guide. Yeah. Good, <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Good for you. That's impressive. You know. Yeah. Chad and I have a unique um, ability to get away from our daily jobs and, and go. And I think that's what's made us successful too, as well. That you know, I've been in financial, the financial planning industry, and, mm-hmm. and Chad is he runs his own business. So we we have the 
ability and free time to escape and build content. And That's huge. Yeah. Go do these things. And it's a great balance in life, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I mean, to take in the outdoors and, and still make a living and provide for your family is I think the only way to, to live life. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. That's the way I've done it all my life. I wouldn't change it. It's been great. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you guys have any suggestions or advice for folks either wanting to get into the outdoor biz or grow their career if they're already in? Hmm. Well, or get into fishing. Find they, find what you like. Find an in, a way to get in and, and just go. Yeah, for it. I mean, I think you know these these types of these types of companies. You just don't do. Th it's got to come from a place of passion. I think you can't mm -hmm. just go. Hey, I want to go make shit loads of money. And hey, I'll just pick. Uh, I don't know. Wind sailing is my thing. Right. Uh, it it doesn't work that way. Right. You know, I think you gotta it it the core read of it's it, gotta be it. you gotta be nuts about the thing. And if it happens to be in the outdoors and it ha ha happens to be something that you think you can make money out of, then go for it. Mm. But, um, you know, and then let's say that check, you can check all that stuff off in your head, then you need to figure out how to differentiate yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I think that that's the key. Yeah. That's good um, advice. Yeah. With, with someone that's already in the industry, I, it really, it's like build your network. Don't fuck anybody over. <laughs> so they make sure that, you know, trust is huge. Mm -hmm outdoor industry when you start to look at it in segments is a very intimate thing yeah everybody knows everybody yeah it's like the town i grew up in of 450 people um you screw up everybody's gonna know yep. within a week yeah you know no that's good that's so well said, yeah yeah um do you guys have any daily routines you use to keep your sanity you meditate you exercise <laughs> you fish I saw, I saw this pop up kick the dog pop walk up the dog kick the yeah, dog. i mean I'm part sure. of for me part of fly fishing is about uh mindfulness and meditation um i, I say it's meditation <laughs> I heard that. without meditating <laughs> who was that guy that you guys were talking to on the, in the pleasanton show you guys were talking you were getting into the mindfulness part of fishing and all that um god i was just listening to that the other day that was I'm a great drinking, episode. i'm drawing a blank yeah, too I'm, I'm thinking yeah. we interviewed yeah. a lot of different yeah, people there. yeah yeah, yeah. Was it George Revel, maybe, with Lost uh, Coast? My, I don't think so. Maybe. I don't think so. It was a guy. We talked to some gals, too. It was a guy. It was a guy. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, It's sorry. funny. I never really thought of it that way, but Chad's when Chad brings up his form of meditation and fishing, and it's definitely mine as well. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't – you just don't think about it. Um, yeah. But I do feel – and even my lady, she's like – you need to get out of here. You know, <laughs> yeah. you need to go to the coast. I can just see it in your eyes. It's driving you crazy and you yeah. need to get out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I wish I, I, I want to get into doing more stuff like running, uh, working out. I, I think those are all, you know, the body fuels the mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's, that's super important. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, do you have any favorite books or you guys give books as gifts very, very, very often? Um, well, I, when, I grew up on a rice farm, like I said earlier. So we had three channels, and <laughs> so you so must have read was, a lot. I read a ton, yeah. so kind of depends on what genre we're talking about. I'm like really into science fiction, so I uh -huh. like classics. And lately, because of where we're at um, as a society with uh, technology, what's happening in biotech and mm -hmm. all the other techs that are out there, and you know, AI, everything, uh, I feel that reading near future sci-fi is kind of like the best. Mm -hmm. kind of canary in the coal mine thing for now mm -hmm. because it's really hard to uh because things are moving so quickly it's very hard to connect the dots in real time so right sci-fi is actually a really good thing to look at you know look forward in, you, you know do sci-fi that's like five to ten years out 20 years out 50 years out um there's a lot of stuff happening that sci-fi is predicting um hmm. I can get in. That's a whole nother episode, but <laughs> that's a whole nother yeah. podcast. I think, yeah, I was say, I think yeah. we need to interview on. Some, yeah, there's some podcasts of around that stuff. Yeah, like, there's there's one called Future State that's really awesome, and it talks about basically the intersection of uh, security, you know, national security, um, technology, and there's one other thing. But it, it's really it's a really great one, Future cool. State. I'll link to that in the show notes. Yeah, go check it out. It's yeah. cool. Cool. Um, yeah, but uh, a book in particular. Um, if it's fly fishing, probably I like Hal Jansen's Stillwater Fly Fishing Secrets book. Thing's awesome. Like if you, uh, the guy's a G. He lives up in Chico. Mm -hmm. He knows his shite. Cool. All right. We'll super, look that. Cool. Super smart dude. Um, do we give him away as gifts? Um, you know, no, but we could. I think as like contests or something like that. It's a mm -hmm. good idea. 
Or sometimes, you know, I run into people and talk. We get to talking about some subject, and I'm a huge reader, so I just give them, a, you know, hey, did you check out this book? And I'll send it to them, you know, that kind of thing. How about just, yourself, Rick? What's man? I've read so many books. It's I feel like for me, it's always the last book I've I've read. Right? I'm just starting. Yep. I'm reading some book. Um, Kristen Hostetter gave it to me. I'm going to butcher the name, but I think it's Shantaram. It's about uh, India. This guy is a prison was a kind of fugitive on the run from Australia and all his shenanigans in India. It's just fascinating. It's a great book. Kind of a pass the time, lose your mind book, you know. So, but there's so many good ones. Why by Simon Sinek. That's a great one. I could mm-hmm. go on and on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you are you a Kindle guy or are you a paper guy? A little of both. Kindle, paper, yeah. and Audible. I listen to books as well, podcasts and books. Yeah. I like right. Kindle. It's clean. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah. take yeah. up room. I like to still. I'm a you know old school. I like the feel of a book in my hand sometimes. But, yeah. You know, I I use Kindle on planes and use it all. Use it all. Um, how about a favorite outdoor gear purchase under a hundred dollars? Nick asked me that one. What did I say, Nick? Yeah, a pair of nippers. <laughs> well, not, not even a pair of nippers. Like not not fly fishing nippers, but I'm talking like CVS. You know? <laughs> yeah, Chad's. Right. If if you can think of it, Chad's got it. You know, he's. he's I've definitely, tried everything. He's definitely one of those. Uh, I was trying to think about this, and it used to be, and this is still, I think, one of the greatest gifts you can give somebody is a kit, a fly fishing kit. Yeah, you know that has mm-hmm. the reel, the line, the rod, and everything. And you can get them under a hundred bucks. I right. saw one for eighty nine. Yeah, you can get them. Um, the seven. ones that I like are, are like one hundred twenty five, one seventy five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and, well, and the only thing you need to upgrade in those things is the reel. Right, the rods mm-hmm. are great. Yeah, I'm sorry. Even the reel's good, but the mm-hmm. the line as well. The line's mm-hmm. probably, I mean, they're a hundred dollars to get a decent mm-hmm. fly line and. Even myself, when I've when I go buy a new fly line and put on a, a rod I've been using for twenty years, it's, amazing, it's, isn't like, it? a, it's like a whole new setup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. So, yeah. but, but I, I think a kit is one of the best things you can get. Yeah. Right? Well, what about extra tough? Oh, that is mid mid sole mid high mid ankle those, boots. Those, man, those, those things are changed. like shit. Yeah, oh, okay. those have yeah. changed a those lot. Things those things are awesome. <laughs> Who makes those? They're the go. best. I don't. I'm not. I don't know those. Extra tough. Yeah. They're, so they're it, just rubber boots. They call them the Kenai sneakers originally. Okay. You know, like if you look at Alaska and all the the dock boats, uh, the guys wearing the, those rub, brown rubber boots. And oh, they fold the, down. Yeah, they yeah, fold yeah. Down. Oh, okay. So no, that was the, kind of yeah. the original extra tough boot, and yeah. then they they came out with like a half cut version of that that you can slip on and off like slippers. Gotcha. Okay. But they're fully waterproof. They're super know? comfortable. It's like wearing Chuck Taylors that are fully enclosed in, okay, in cool. rubber. Yeah. I'll basically. Like the the show. So, yeah, and I they've come out some with some cool awesome. cool designs and um and now they have some boat, you know, kind of boat shoes and, mm-hmm. and water shoes that are pretty nice. They're, yeah. yeah, their deck shoes are killer with a little paracord for them. Oh wow, yeah. cool. Yeah. I'll and they're they out. they drain, insta drain and insta dry. Good uh-huh. call on the extra tough. Yeah, yeah, nice, good, call. yeah. good move. Nice. Uh, yeah, and then you want to talk about floating really quick? Yeah, I, go I for always, it. what's the, your favorite the floating? <laughs> <laughs> Tell the story because I, I don't, I don't, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like Abilene. Yeah, so we're on the. Me and Nick were on this trip to the middle. I'll tell. I'll try and tell this story really quick. So that we were on this trip to the middle fork of the Salmon River on like a hundred mile float that took five days to do, uh-huh. and, and wooden drift boats and like class yeah. three water. It was epic. Cool. It was it was awesome. The guides there were greasing all the flies with Abilene. Abilene. You know what I'm talking about? Like the Abilene. makeup. Maybe it's Maybelline. No, Maybelline. Maybe it's makeup. Makeup. Yeah, Maybelline. It's basically makeup remover, and it's a tub of that shit. It's like 10 bucks, <laughs> and you can probably fit like, um, I don't know, 100, um, 100 little, you know, dry fly shakers and stuff <laughs> inside probably of than, it. Probably more than that. Oh, so goodness. it's a lifetime supply for 10 bucks. Of floating, yeah, <laughs> and no joke, a lifetime, su- more like a three generation lifetime <laughs> supply of floating I, for a hundred. The family, the family bucket of floating. <laughs> Our next Instagram story is going to be a poll, and we're going to use your Abilene, yeah, versus some some other, yep, like what, like, like a loon, loon brand, like loon. a loon, brand. yeah, right. See right. how long that thing floats in the water. And have a <laughs> All right, that's a good idea. That's awesome. I like <laughs> it. I love. It. I'm gonna go look for that stuff now. Try it out. I've been plugging that stuff based on a very small. Um, sample size of one myself. <laughs> Sounds like that's all you need, though. One. <laughs> you can use chapstick. You can use anything. You anything. Want, yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. Any synthetic. Yeah. Right. It's uh, just cool. It's a good hack. I'll have to say, that is a great hack. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um. Anything else you want to say to our listeners or ask of our listeners as we wrap up here? Nick. 
No, just, um, you know, try to get out and fly fish as much as you can. Even if you're not good at it, go to a local shop and, and learn as much as you can and, and get, get your kids out. You cool. know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. if you see trash, you know, you've got your net on your ass. Why don't you throw some trash in the back of that net uh, on your way you, out? There you Perfect. Can, yep. Clean up after you and everybody else. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. And how can people find you? What's the best way to reach out to you guys? Email? Well, I'll get, I'm going to give you um, Nick's home address. Are you guys ready? <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait. We're recording. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, we're online yep. at Bar- um, barbless.co. Yep. That's the main website. Now, on that website, there's a few different things. Um, you can sign up for an email list that will put you on a beta invite list for a few different apps we're working on. I'll give you a really quick overview of those. Um, one is for flows. So if you're into CFS, even if you whitewater, this is something you'd probably be interested in. You can follow different rivers and streams like you would follow a friend. Hmm. Um, you can get CFS there, projections, all this stuff, and also oh, cool. push notifications. Huh. They give you um, information in terms of when, you know, if the water got into a certain range that you're wanting it to be in, rather than have to go to the CDEC website and refresh, 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 you get a, t- a push notification. Now, the other one we're, we're working yeah, on cool. that isn't live yet, but is pretty promising is we're doing, we're trying to do um, automated fish ID for anglers. So you basically upload a photo to the cloud. We're going to unpack it, tell you what species it is and start to quantify your fishing experience. Mm, very cool. That's all we're going to say about that one for now. Um, okay, well, there's a lot of other stuff coming on online. Um, if you're into tying your own leaders, leader formulas for fly fishing, or you want to learn how, um, we have a whole site section of the site on that. That's at rigs.barbless.co. It says rigs in the, um, in the header, click the there. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. You can, yeah, you can look at different leader formulas, much like you'd look at Google maps where you can, you know, um, scale in scale out pan zoom the camera all that stuff hmm. um so rigs are just for people that don't know a rig is just like your leader system so basically from the tip of your rod to the end of your lure or fly is your rig yeah, right good call yeah. so it's a leader that it could involve swivels or you know different size tippets different you know there's a lot of different applications and chad's created a basically an encyclopedia to hold store you know and um share and and um you can create your own yeah i'm looking at that. i see lance using Egan's, the tools and yeah, euro nymphing leader that's pretty it's pretty cool yeah, share yeah, them it's you awesome can, you know it's improve being, on them it's being modified and, and improved upon too so every day well, we're so. making incremental changes i bet yeah very cool no, that's push a, the ball pretty cool if you yeah. want some some kind of s- secretive stuff that guys have worked 20 years implementing right. and trying mm-hmm. you know it's a good place to go it's a great place to go yeah there's a lot of you know we have a lot of guides that have, you know, graciously donated their their IP, you could say, mm-hmm. for yeah. for the endeavor to get, you know, purposes to onboard more and more anglers. Mm-hmm. That's great. No, that's huge. That's a great resource. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so people can reach out to you on the website. There's just the contact page there. Yeah. Okay. And cool. then on Instagram at yep. barbless.co. Um, cool. You can follow Nick at NorCal Fly Guy. You can follow me at Chad Alderson. Uh, we have a Facebook group, very small Facebook group. Um, we are purposely trying to keep it small. It's a lot of, a lot of guides and mm-hmm. then people that are, you know, fanatic about the brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're kind of like our focus group, if you will, for, oh, cool. yeah. you know, steering committee almost for, for what we're doing. Good idea. You know? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, great. You um, guys are killing it. I, I look forward to meeting you at the show one of these days. And, yeah, for sure. And maybe we'll get the fish at some point. Sounds good, Rick. Come on down Rick, to the east side. Yeah. Rick, I appreciate having uh, you know, how you having us on as guest. Um if Rick. you guys are listening, you want to check us out, give us a shot, maybe one date. <laughs> see how it goes. <laughs> Great maybe later. listen to a couple episodes. So definitely tune into the the Barbless Code Barbless.co cool. podcast. And uh, yeah, we'll link to all that stuff in the show notes. Well, awesome and, guys. And yeah, we'll be talking to you soon too, Rick. So appreciate yeah. the opportunity to yeah. be on your show. S- same here. Appreciate it. We'll uh, cool. we'll do it again in a week or so. Sounds, Sounds like good, man. Plan. Right on, man. Thanks. All right, Rick. All right, see you. If you want more of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to go to theoutdoorbizpodcast.com where you find all the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. Until next time, be sure to make time to get outside. Get outside.